A forgotten artifact lies in pieces on a planet far from Earth. Few know it exists except those who took it back and those whose ancestors created it. Four young people are thrown into a race against emissaries of the gods to find its pieces. Mistrust, greed, and magic are tangled in an endless web. What will the fate be of the universe once it is found and reassembled? Get Scepter of the Gods, The Rod of Truth now on Amazon and get wrapped up in the saga that will not let you go. Good morning, and welcome to the Motivational Devotion, where we are merging motivation and spirituality to create a daily dose of confident positivity. I hope that this morning's podcast will help you to be more spiritually and positively motivated so that you can transform your day. This is a special episode in a series of podcasts based on Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. For several years now, I have gone back to the habits taught in this book to prepare for the coming year and home in closer and closer to my lifelong dream and my goals so that I could more effectively achieve my goals. Year after year, we hear people joking about setting New Year's resolutions and then abandoning them by February. Personally, I don't find that very funny. I hope that your resolutions are more important to you than to give them up after only a month or two. What if you were to set one, two, maybe three at the most resolutions or goals for 2024, and then at the end of 2024, find that you nailed each one of them? You can. I set two goals that to me were very large. As I talk about in the motivational devotional, I had to change and grow to become more than I was in order to achieve those goals. As I say this now, I have done that. I changed. I grew. I achieved. Starting with the November 27, 2023 podcast and running through the New Year's Eve podcast, This series offers 35 episodes of principles, inspiration, and motivation that I use toward fulfilling my own lifelong dream. I have audacious goals for 2024, but only three, because more than that will water down your efforts. I will achieve mine by this time next year. You can do the same, and I hope you will pursue yours with relentless intent. If you find these helpful, please go to the Motivational Devotional Facebook page and let me know. For now, let's get on with it. Have you ever felt like you were suffocating? One of my earliest memories is being four years old, and my dad took me fishing with one of his cousins on Lake Worth in Texas. Not being much of a fisherman at the age of four, I was finding other things to be interested in, namely the sparkly water due to the way the sun and a clear blue sky glinted off of it, and without any warning, I went from the dock into the water. Sinking down, I saw the sunlight glinting on the water's surface from the other side and saw it drifting further and further away. I don't remember anything about breathing or suffocating, but I remember this sense of panic that I was going the wrong way, and I needed to go back toward that circle of light on the top of the water. The next thing I knew, I was on the dock again because my dad had seen me coming up toward the surface, and he pulled me out by my hair. Those are the kinds of stories we hear from people who had a different experience, a time in which they were all too aware of not being able to breathe. If you are underwater, you can only hold your breathing for so long before your body forces an involuntary response and you suck in water. At that point, a person is only moments away from death since the water that would then be in the lungs would suffocate the person from the inside. Although I am fortunate enough to not have had an experience of literally suffocating, I have been emotionally suffocated by well-meaning people, and I have had such severely tragic experiences in my life that those caused me to feel like I was suffocating, literally. Maybe you had a very real horrific experience of almost drowning or some other similar experiences. If so, my heart goes out to you. I'm so sorry. That has to be very, very, very scary. And then, just as real at the time, maybe you had a dream in which you couldn't breathe for some reason and you woke up gasping for air. That feels just as real. People who are grieving often say that the initial experience of grief sucks the air out of their lungs and they feel like they can't breathe. I can say firsthand that that can be true. 
Breathing is, of course, vital to life, and psychological breathing is vital to mental well-being. Psychological error comes from feeling capable, being productive, having a meaningful life, and most of that comes from knowing that we are heard by other people, that we have a meaningful voice. If you have a meaningful input and no one seems to understand you, you're going to feel increasingly like no one really hears you. The first person who comes along and takes the time to actually understand, not just hear your words, but to get you, as well as to get your meaning, is someone who gives you psychological air. Haven't you heard the expression that someone was like a breath of fresh air? Well, there you go. It's not just me. It's been a thing for a long time. In keeping up with the fifth habit of highly effective people, which is to seek first to understand and then be understood, taking the time to understand someone before asserting an opinion or instruction means that you help them breathe psychologically, and then maybe they can fix their own problem. If nobody gives them that breath of fresh air, then that person's problem might get to the point where it is suffocating them. Wouldn't it be better for someone like maybe you to give them emotional and spiritual CPR? I am also finding at this stage of my own life that less truly is more. And as I continue to shed things I don't need, the very air around me feels easier to breathe. If you don't have that person in your life who can breathe life into your circumstances or provide the kind of support that brings that breath of fresh air, it's okay. We don't have to have that person for the journey to still be possible, and you never know when or if such a person might drop into your life. You can do it on your own, though. Keep in your life what you need as part of your lifelong dream, and let go of the rest, and know that the universe understands you. The more you do, the more the breath of God's Spirit will move through your life and bring renewal, and the more you will understand that all of creation is conspiring in your favor. Trust that the universe always has your back. The Greek philosopher Seneca wrote, One of the most beautiful qualities of true friendship is to understand and to be understood. Thank you for taking the time to listen today. Please help keep this podcast going by following the Motivational Devotional Facebook page, following at Threefold Way Radio on Twitter, and sharing the written format of today's message from motivational-devotional.com on your social media. I am deeply grateful for your support and thank you for letting Motivational Devotional be part of your journey. Peace out. See you tomorrow. Motivational Devotional is a production of Threefold Way Radio, LLC.